They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Good Foods Co-op, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, your village shop. We interrupt your regular program for this important announcement. What are you doing sitting on your can with a garden full of vegetables and no real plan? So get off your dog and take a stand. It's time for you to can. Clean your pressure cooker good. It's time for you to can some food. If you don't grow veggies, don't be blue. There's a farmer's market close to you. Tomatoes and potatoes, beans and corn, sauerkraut and pickles, and I'll be darned. You can even can sausage and sugar beets. Oh, in summertime sweet. If you don't grow veggies, then don't be blue. There's a farmer's market quite close to you. If you grow your own, you're a step ahead. Now listen to what my grandma said. Tomatoes, potatoes, beans and corn, sauerkraut and pickles, and I'll be darned. You can even can sausage and sugar beets. Ain't summertime sweet. What are you doing sitting on your can with a carton full of vegetables and no real plan? So get off your dump and take a stand. It's time for you to can. Brought to you by Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen. Do you think on the radio? I like. I think he's crazy. I, I thought I liked him. Well, he said you could uh, can potatoes, mm -hmm. or corn, mm -hmm. or carrots. Good idea. I know you can. You know what? And that's another thing. We're stuff's coming out of the garden right now. Bless your heart. Bless my heart. <laughs> Bless our hearts. Uh huh. It's been crazy yes, around it here. Is. I can't even bend down to help you pick vegetables. So Sorry. we have a lot of stuff coming on board and we got to get it put up. Now, we do. our freezers are full mm -hmm. of deer and pork and other such things. So we're going to store some stuff just like this. Now, why would you want to can potatoes? Now, there's one reason why I like to can potatoes like this is because you can store them, cut them about a half inch thick. And what happens when you take them out of the jar and put them into the pan? Put a little butter and onions, yum. The best fried potatoes you ever made in your life because they're already kind of cooked, a little. Kind of yeah. cooked a little bit, but you can brown them real easy. My mouth's watered just thinking about I'm it. I'm hungry. Okay, we're gonna talk about carrots. We're gonna can some carrots, okay? Same idea, good. Same idea. And they're pretty, look how pretty the jars are. Yeah, now something that's not so pretty a lot of times when you can it is meat. It's true. That doesn't mean it doesn't taste good. Now think about the stuff that we've canned. We've canned chicken, Right. we've canned deer, we've canned beef, we've mm. canned pork. But you know what, a lot of people don't think about I started digging deep inside my memory vaults. Uh, you know, things that people used to can a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Old fashioned stuff right. that I remember people talking about. I remember people taking sausage, pieces of sausage, sausage patties, mm -hmm. just brown them on each side. We're gonna can sausage tonight. It's absolutely wonderful to have this kind of stuff. Corn, yes, you can can love, corn. Love corn. You can freeze it, obviously it's very good like that, but if you want to make grandma's special corn, we're gonna show you how to do that. It's so easy. We've already canned some corn. We're going to show you how to get that taste. There's that taste, that corn you've had 
several times in your life you think, man, that's the best corn I've ever eaten. There's a secret to that. You know Grandma's secret? No, I don't. Shh, okay. don't, don't tell them here. I don't know. Pickles. A little while back, we asked for pickle ideas, and people ran like the wind. Yeah, they did. <laughs> and they mentioned Aunt B. I don't know how many times. Remember Aunt B's pickles that yeah. nobody wanted to eat? Grandma Nikki made some pickles. Now, those weren't from cucumbers from the garden. She right. took already processed pickles and turned them into something extraordinarily good. You ate those all that night. But what happens if you've grown your own cucumbers and you mm -hmm. want to do something with them? So we're going to try a couple of things. Now, when I was digging back in the vault, and I started thinking about the pickles from the old days. Do you remember the old timers talking about refrigerator pickles? I do. All right, you know what that means? That means they're not fermented. They don't have to process for a long time. You put them in, you make them, you put them in the refrigerator, and you eat them. It's for instant consumption. Yeah. They'll last a couple weeks. If I open a jar of pickles, they're not going to last that long anyway. A minute with you. Yeah, I like okay. my pickles. So we're going to talk about refrigerator pickles tonight. We've got our fan on because it's hot. So if you yes, hear something in the background, it's not an airplane getting ready to take off. It's a little Eskimo fan that's, right. that's keeping us, us cool. nice and cool. So we got a lot to do tonight. Normally, we might be out shooting something, going somewhere, but Nikki has to stay close to home. She can't lift anything. So you got to be very careful. And you got to feed me. I liked your dance there. Did you like my dancing? I'm going to show me those moves again. I'm right. afraid to move. I'm Top being careful. Be right cautious. There. We got this little mandolin. That's nice, isn't it? That's very nice. I'm going to have you hold that, and then okay. I'll cut them up. Now, for me, it's a lot easier. I'll go ahead and have you trim these guys up. We're going to cold pack some carrots. What does that mean? These go directly into the jar. That's cold packing. We're going to take our boiling water. You wonder why the steam was rising here, because this water is boiling. We're going to pour onto those carrots. Then we're going to put a little bit of salt. When you're taking your pressure cooker and you're getting ready to use it, there's one thing you have to remember. Check your seal right here, this rubber seal. Take it out, look at it, make sure there's no places where it's broken. Make sure that you have a clear hole. The worst thing that could happen is that for that to get stopped up. That's where your pressure escapes. If that gets fouled up, you got problems. then you'd have problems. That's about the only thing bad that can happen. Make sure that you seal it properly, put the top back on properly, and you're good to go. Now, do you want me to mandolin? I already okay. cut a few, but I'll let you do it. Now, I'm doing this just for uniformity. Be careful of your fingers. That's why I'm going to let you do it. I've only got a few left, yeah. and I'm, I'm going to try to protect those. That's a lot quicker. It's a lot quicker to me than trying to cut them up with a knife. Now, the salt is up to you if you would like to put salt in this. You can put about a teaspoon. Now, do you have to cook these first, or you can just boil no, them? No, these are raw packed. You can oh, hot pack okay. them. If you'd like to hot pack them, you can boil them for five minutes, stick them in here. Okay. But I raw like packing, better. raw packing, easier to me, it's a lot easier. And that's now, it. what we're going to do that's is it. take our hot boiling water. We're going to put just enough in there to cover that. And we want about an inch head space, so that's about right. Now, obviously, your jars need to be sterilized. You need to be very careful. Make sure that there's nothing on the top of your jar that will keep that from sealing, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, if you look at our Hoosier cabinet back there, you see all our food back there stored nicely. I love to look at it after we've processed it. To me, it's just pretty to look at, especially when you got a bunch of it. That seems too simple. That's it? That That's is it. That's it. Wow. Now, from here in a little while, we're going to put our non-cooked ones right over here. Okay. From here to the pressure cooker in just a little while. All right, now, typically, if you use quarts or pints, there's a large separation of time. With carrots, and I don't know why, but pints are 25 minutes, quarts are 30. Hmm. Now, with potatoes, it's different, and corn is different, and other things are different. But what's next, you say? What is next? Did you say that? I did. What is next? Corn. Oh, okay. We've got corn by the oodles coming on in Kentucky right now. Right. It's kind of, uh, it's not exactly raw packing because we have blanched this corn for three minutes. All right. Now, there are rules about corn. When you put it in a jar, don't scrape the cob. So it's different than freezing. It is different. Okay. You don't want to go all the way down in there. You don't want all the juice. Just get like, you know, three quarters of the way down. Get that done. We can let, set these out and let them cool I'm for a minute. Them in and I'll cut them. Just okay. cut three quarters of the way in. Put that in the jar. You figure it takes four cobs to do this? About four cobs, yeah. This corn, 
was grown right up the road. This is Gowrains. Yummy. Man, oh man. In the wintertime, you crack this open, you're ready to go. And that's good frozen, too. And that should fill about a jar, I would say. Let's try that. You go ahead and do that. All right. So we're just packing that in there. Right about there. Right about there. There you go. And that's it. That's simple, too. I like it. Inch headroom. Okay. Salt, if you so desire. I, I so desire. You so desire. Mm -hmm. Once again, make sure there's nothing around the seal. We've done that. Nothing to prevent that from sealing. Now, what happens when you put your stuff in the pressure cooker? You take them out, you set them on the counter, you're looking at your beautiful canning. They all pop except for one. Uh-oh. What do you do with that one? What do you do? You tell me. Eat it. You eat it first. Throw butter on it and eat yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat that right now. Now, obviously, it's just been cooked, right, but so sometimes delicious. they don't seal for some reason. Not very often, but if it doesn't seal, eat that one first. Don't waste it. Okay. Now, if you find later on when you're going down to your storage area and you pull a can out, whatever it may be, and you take it out and it's not sealed, what do you do? Throw it away. Feed it to the pig. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't even feed no? it to okay. the pig. That doesn't happen very often either, okay. but, but remember, your smeller is your feller, it's your friend. Okay. You know, we've never had that hardly ever happen. Make sure when you're doing tomatoes that you don't get any tomatoes that are past their prime. A lot of times it's got yeah. a little black spot. Make sure you cut all any of the imperfections off, only use the good stuff. Now, what have we got? Let me clean this mess up. Let's clean this mess up. We'll be right back. You feeling okay? I am. I'm good. Got so a piece of corn. <laughs> <laughs> mm, there you go. Took care of that problem. <laughs> Bless her heart. I got my own little bib. All right, now let's peel some potatoes. Right. And we're going to take these potatoes. Now, if you left your potatoes whole, which you can do if they're new potatoes, you can leave those whole. You'll want to boil those for 10 minutes. If you slice them or dice them, then you want to cook them a little bit less, about two minutes on that. Now, we're going to take these and we're going to cut them up with our mandolin. And the same thing applies here. After you boil your potatoes for about two minutes, you could put them in a little ascorbic acid solution to keep them from turning brown on you. But we're gonna use ours fairly quickly. I'm not too worried about that. We've got our water boiling over here. I think we've got enough for a jar. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these potatoes, we're gonna put them in here for two minutes. Then we're gonna take these, we're gonna put them in the jar. Now we're gonna boil some fresh water and we're gonna pour back in on top of those potatoes because all that starch out of the water that they boiled in, it would look really cloudy. We don't yeah. want that, we want that nice clear look. All right, let's let our potatoes boil. All right, let's take our potatoes out. Now what I'm gonna do is dump this out, start me some fresh water. I'm gonna try to jam these in here as much as I can. You know, they've only been there for two minutes. Right. So they're still fairly firm. Mm -hmm. And when you cook them up, they're gonna get a little bit softer. They may break up just a little bit. But that's, yeah. a, that's about enough for one jar. Okay. okay, now we're gonna take our boiling water out. A little bit of salt. Do you desire? Mm -hmm. A little bit of salt. Yummy. Good. It's good. Now as that boils, that salt will flow all through those potatoes. Look at there. So there we go. Now, Perfect. you asked me, how long do the potatoes go? Mm -hmm. Did you ask me that? I did ask you that. I want to know. Pints 35, quarts 40. Again, one of those five degree separations there. Okay. So then we simply take our jars, according to what we're doing, into the counter, repeat the process. Now, we're going to talk about most pressure cookers. That's a Presto 16 quart. This is your little ring. All right, your jiggler, or your weight, that's five pounds. That's 10, according to your elevation. In Kentucky, most times it's gonna be 10. That's 10 pounds right there, 10 pounds pressure. When that goes on top, we're gonna step through this again. Go ahead and seat that over there, if you will. You heat that up. Once you see steam coming out the top, you know you're good because you're not plugged up. That's a good thing. You wait about 10 minutes till all that steam comes out. Then you place your weight on there. Now, only start timing when the jiggler starts jiggling. When you hear that noise, you know it's time. When that happens, start timing from there. It's 35, 40, 75, whatever. That's when you start your process. The next thing you know, you've got a bunch of beautiful jars sitting out in front of you. 
Now, let's talk about something that you might find a little unusual. The smell. Smells good. This is our sausage. Now, say you wanted to take a trip, okay? Are you doing a field trip or going to camp out or go canoeing or go spend a couple nights in the great outdoors and you want to take some stuff with you that you don't have to worry about Good idea. keeping cold? All right, we have browned this sausage, okay? I'm going to take this remaining grease and we're going to heat up some chicken broth. Now, again, it's not going to look beautiful, but it it's going to taste delicious. Okay, we're going to take our warm chicken broth. I'm gonna put the rest of this little bit of grease in here. Mmm, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Yummy. And that. That's ready to seal? Yep, that's ready to go. Inch head space. And the question you're probably gonna ask me now is how long? 75 minutes. Wow. Meat's a little longer yeah. for pints, 90 for quarts. Okay. Now that's enough. I'm canning tonight mainly, if you notice, in pints. Why am I doing that? Perfect for two. For the two of us. Yeah. So that's the perfect amount of corn. This is the perfect amount of carrots. That's enough sausage for us if we're going to fix some bacon to go along with it. So on and so forth. So we're doing this in pints because those are just enough for us too. Right. Now if we have company, we get two or three out and we're good to go. You pretty much know how much it takes to serve and you can take these out and, and do accordingly. Right. Hopefully we'll have gazillions of these. Mm-hmm. That'd be nice. You feeling okay? I feel pretty good. I'm hungry though. You hungry? I'm All hungry. Right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Now, let's talk about this precious little corn. We've all had that corn. Okay. Right. That delicious corn. Our grandma made it, you had it at a restaurant, and you're like, man, what is magic about that? Go ahead and open it. I'm gonna loosen that up. Now there's so many ways you can do corn. If it's fresh off the cob, fry it in bacon grease. So what we're gonna do is bring a little cornstarch in, mix it up in a little water, a little bit of chicken broth, equal parts. You don't need much. All right, so anyway, you're gonna take equal parts water and cornstarch. We're gonna take our corn, put it in the pan, and let's take some butter. How much would you like? I'm gonna fork you some off. You know what? You gotta have quite a bit of butter. This is real butter. We don't use margarine. I'm gonna take that much. Yeah, you can tell how warm it is in here because of the butter. So we're gonna take our corn. We're gonna melt the butter. This is so simple. You old timers already know this, but I remember the first time I had corn like this. It was Orangeburg Elementary School in Mason County. They had some of the best lunch ladies. You remember the lunch Back ladies? Back in the day, yeah. Who knew how to cook? Yeah. Oh my. I remember having this corn, and years later, I, I asked somebody, how in the world did they make that? They said, well, they probably put butter, lots of butter and cornstarch. Do you ever know that my grandmother that had the restaurant ended up being a lunch lady? Those kids no, had kidding. it made, yes. That's where oh, they moved to Florida. She was the That's best. That's not even fair for the other kids. The best cook in the school ever. They had really good food. Here comes the cornstarch. Now, we're going to use some salt. If you like a little pepper in your corn, which I do. I do too. Glenn would demand. Glenn would want just tons and tons, yes, he tons would. of pepper because he's like that. And we're stocked up. See how that's thickening up? See how that cornstarch yeah. is thickening that up? <laughs> now, that makes oh, that, that almost like a cream corn. Now, just a little bit of sugar. And really, when you see it boiling like that, see that thickening like that, that right good. there? I will try it. Look how quickly that came together. Now let's, let's see if this is the magic corn. You ready? Uh oh. Oh, that's good. That's like the best cream corn ever. <laughs> that's it. That's really good. Mmm. Um, buttery. That's buttery. Mmm. Oh, I remember going to uh, some people's house. Sometimes when you're eating, does it bring back memories? It's yeah. like a song. Where you been? Where you been? The coals. Ruby and Linda Cole, and I'm pretty sure they fix corn. This is like how it's been right all here. week. You've been just feeding me. <laughs> Bless your heart. Mmm. That's delicious. Hey, how would you like some sausage? I would like some. To go with your corn. Okay. Don't set this away too far because right I'm going to eat every bit of okay. that with your help. Let's get the skillet out. All right, let's get the one. That is canned. Now that will congeal after it's been setting. It's really warm up here. All right, now. That smells good. We're gonna pull these out. You could just eat them though, right? You could just eat them right like that. Okay. But we're just gonna warm them up. What's that sound? Nice sizzle. Mm. Sounds good. 
Now, does that look like a piece of sausage? That looks really That's good. It's been through a pressure cooker. And it went quick. I took it right back out, put it right back in the pan, and there's our sausage. Now what I'm gonna do, mm, I'm gonna take some onions. onions you just cut up, and I'm gonna put it in that existing sausage grease, and I am going to get one of our jars of potatoes ready. You see where we're going here? I do. And a lot of times we eat in stages. Crazy. We'll try this thing, we'll try this thing, then we'll eat some corn. This is, this is really the way That's we do dinner. things sometimes. And it's kind of fun. We're gonna have some yummy fried potatoes. And a lot of people use bacon grease, a lot of people use butter. We use sausage grease, that's good. Sausage grease, are mm -hmm. you kidding me? <laughs> now look at that, I'm gonna get those nice and brown, about where I want them. What are you eating? A potato, they're yummy. A potato. A potato. So you know me, if I'm cooking stuff, I like for it to go quick. Mm -hmm. Now what happens is these potatoes are already cooked. They've already got that nice tenderness to them. So they're gonna cook a lot quicker. All I wanna do is get a brown edge to them. The onions are already done. What do you think? All we need is some eggs on the side. This is perfect. Got my my potatoes, my sausage. I just need a little bit now, of Now this egg. all came out of a can. This is so good. Now we're uh, running out of time for tonight's show, so we're gonna tell you real quick, we're gonna remind you about our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page. Like it, check out where we're going, what we're doing. We're going somewhere. Where are we going? Teach me. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you need to talk to Laura. Okay, I'll teach me. Chef Bill is going to call it a meal fit for a king because he used to work for Elvis Presley Enterprises and he's yeah. talked to folks. Oh. We're going to have to stay the night because after we eat that, we're not going to be able to drive home. We eat no. Much food. Yeah, no. we're going to have to stay we, there the we night. We pass out from the food coma. That's right. Now, mm. also, what else might we want to look at? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. All the recipes you might not have seen before. There are hundreds of segments and shows that you might not have looked at. We do a show almost every week. Now, most shows do 12 to 17 shows. We do a bunch because we eat just about every day. Yeah, we do. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I did yourself. Look at those potatoes. Yeah, I did yourself. I'm telling you what, big old hunk of onion in there. Let's talk about pickles. These are called refrigerator pickles. I don't think we have time to actually cut them up and show you, but I'm gonna give you the recipe right now. This is enough just for a couple jars. I want you to try them. I don't want you to do a huge batch, but you're gonna need one cup of white vinegar, one and a half cup of sugar, about a teaspoon of pickling salt, one half teaspoon of celery seeds. Also add about a half a teaspoon, or you can go three quarters of a mixed pickling spices, okay? I'm gonna take some red pepper flakes, some onions. Well, let's take and slice those real thin, and six or seven cucumbers. And you're gonna cut those up. Boil all your ingredients. Put your pickles in the bottom of the jar. Put a few pickles, put a few red pepper flakes. Keep layering that till you get to the top. Pour your juice in there. Put them in a the refrigerator. The next day, you've got refrigerated pickles. They're Once good, too. Them. And we use two different kinds of cucumbers. And here's what they look like with all the yummy stuff on the top. Let me get you a good big one here. They still have all that fresh cucumber taste mm, because you haven't cooked them to death. Mm. You hear that crunch? Mm -hmm. Delicious. No. I like mine hot. <laughs> What'd you get, a pepper? I put a lot of red pepper flakes in there. I like those. Now, those will keep for a couple months in your refrigerator. Refrigerator pickles. You taste that? I like Get it. Get the onions and the red peppers open. I would like that with a roast beef dinner on the side. Wouldn't that be really? good? Yeah, just have that bitey. You thing. know, the old timers, they always had something pickled sitting on the side. That's how my grandfather did it. You gotta have that sweet vinegary. That's good. All right, now, one more thing we're gonna try. We did the Mrs. Wages. All right, just out of curiosity, tell me what you think about this. I haven't found the perfect dill pickle yet. I'm still looking for it. It says all natural ingredients, and all you do is basically boil this mixture in vinegar. You pour those over your pickles. That sounds simple. Boom. You I hot like pack simple. them. You hot pack them. I'd like to Follow try Follow the instructions one. on there. You want to try I'd one? I'd like to try one. I love this. what you think? Mmm. So crunchy. Could you turn these into grandma's pickles? Oh my good. You could. Mmm. Wow. That's good and salty. Not good bad. Good job. Good job. Not bad. Well, it's a good job for Miss Wages. Mm -hmm. If you just want to be lazy, like I do a lot of times, try some of that. Not bad. That's a kosher deal. 
Well, I'm full, actually. Was that dinner? But the thing is, quick turnaround. I don't want to wait six months on a pickle. If I got, if I got them sitting there looking at me, I want to eat them. Right. Well, you know, we had to stay close to home. Mm -hmm. So what we did was what we normally do. We experiment with food as best we could. You heard me clicking and clanging around in the kitchen. <laughs> and then I clicked and clanged around and cleaned things up. My belly's full. You did? You clean? Really? You didn't look. I can't wait to go look. <laughs> Are you cleaning I'm, all this I'm up so too? I'm so underappreciated. I'm oh, yeah. excited. Oh, yeah. All right. At this point, it's all about good times, good friends, and wonderful eats. And the guy on the radio was right. Yes. You okay. can, you can, can, you can, can. corn. <laughs> See you next week on Tim Warmer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by the city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean. Careful craftsmanship, continual improvement. Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987. Edward Jones, this is Shirley speaking. How may I help you? Oh, hey Neil, how are you? How was the trip? With nearly 7 million investors. He's right here. Hold on one sec. You'd expect us to have a highly skilled call center. Kevin, Neil Hawley's on line one. Okay, great. And we do. It's how Edward Jones makes sense of investing.